Hey everyone! So, there's not many official reveals this week, but there is a bunch of news to go over, but I feel like this is the most important thing to talk about right now. John Warden, who was the head designer of Transformers, was let go by Hasbro, and it's in the middle of his family having a great deal of medical expenses. They've set up a GoFundMe. I have the link down below in my comments, um, or down in my, uh, my description, rather. And I would very much say if you're able to afford to send some money their way, please do. I was able to kick in about 20 bucks. Uh, and all I'm going to say is I saw a lot of comments saying like, he was the head toy designer. Why doesn't he have money? Uh, for one, medical care is very, very expensive. And two, head toy designer, low toy designer, I don't care what level of toy designer you are. You don't get paid much. This isn't like a CEO of Hasbro. This isn't like a board member. This guy actually worked for a living. And then he got given the boot by a company that, uh, in all honesty, if they had to start kicking people, they should be kicking the, the people who have never worked a day in their life and yet were able to get to the top because of who their parents were. That's, uh, that's my opinion. I'm not going to get too deep into it. But it's ridiculous that Hasbro will do these layoffs and it's always against the people that have been bringing them some of the most profits. They did this last year to Wizards of the Coast. They're doing it this year to a lot of the Transformers team. Um, and at the end of the day, all I can say is the free market kills art. And we're moving swiftly past that to news. So, some sightings this week. So, we have a new Hot Wheels barricade coming out. If you remember a few weeks ago, they recalled the Hot Wheels barricade. And it seems to be it was because of the policeman's union. So now there's a new version coming out that has a different uh, number attached to it. It's now 643. And there is no to punish and enslave on the car anymore. But you are able to get a Hot Wheels barricade again, hopefully. I'm including this just because I don't know if this has actually been a news story or not yet. I know we've talked about people finding TF1 Megatron. I don't think we've seen anyone find SS Reactivate Bumblebee. So, Cheesemus said that apparently their dad found that stuff. So, hey, I'm not going to usually include stuff like this, but just because we haven't talked about it before, this is a, uh, a sightings news thing. Going to official reveals. So, it looks as though Takaratomi and Beast Kingdom are going to be teaming up. And interestingly, even though you can see that we have a very G1 Megatron... The Optimus seems to be based on Energon, and past that, it looks like some of the partner characters are going to include Beast Megatron and Longrack, or at least characters that look a lot like those characters. Uh, you can see there's also an elephant. Some people are saying that might be Beast Wars Ironhide. We'll just have to wait and see, but that'd be really cool to get some of the older Beast Wars designs back out through this line. Uh, Super 7 is going to do their G2 slash Diclone Color Devastator. I'm sure someone is interested in that. And now this list of names I have here, these are leaks of a potential final wave of deluxes for Transformers Earthspark. It looks as though they're going to be doing Soundwave, Hashtag, the Cyberglow Megatron, Spitfire, and Cosmos. Uh, the Cyberglow Megatron and the Spitfire is the reason why I think this might actually be real. Because if it was all unique molds, I would say there's no way that this is a final wave. The fact that half of it is going to be very simple repaints, and we're going to be getting specifically Soundwave, which is a design that's been kicking around for so long, I'm hoping this is real. Because I would love that Soundwave, I would love that Cosmos, I would love to have all five of the Terrans in the deluxe price point, and Spitfire would be cool to have as well. So, hopefully this is real. Hopefully. Third party. A lot of third-party stuff this week. Um, of course, TFCon Baltimore just wrapped up. So, you can imagine, there were a lot of reveals to be made. So, we're going to start off small. DNA Design has a couple of upgrade kits coming out. For one, there's an upgrade kit for the Studio Series Nemesis. He looks really good. This is Rise of the Beast Studio Series Nemesis, just so we're clear. And they're doing an add-on kit for Animated Motormaster. It's just a recolor of the add-on kit they did for Animated Optimus, but it actually looks really good. I might get this just because I love how it looks on Motormaster. So this is Iacon 3D Labs. They do 3D printing stuff. This is going to be a Legend Scale Throne 
for your Grimlock, and it's based on the throne he had when he was the leader of the Autobots in Marvel. We're also getting some stuff from New Age. For one, they're doing Warpath, and he looks incredible. Uh, I might get this guy because I'm always interested in good Warpaths. But New Age didn't stop there. They're also going to be doing Gears, who also just looks incredible. If it's New Age, it's always going to look good. And because they're doing Gears, of course, they're also going to do Swerve. So, a good chunk from New Age. But, of course, they're not the only Legend Skull company out there, because Magic Square is doing another version of their Shockwave. If you remember the many toys of, I said that the Magic Square Spock was the best Legend Skull Shockwave. This is a retool to make him more animation accurate. And he looks really good, actually. I love the new head sculpt. They're also going to start doing Bruticus. So we have their Brawl, who looks perfect. And their Swindle just looks insane. Look at the legs, specifically. Those do not look like the legs of a Transformer. And that makes me so interested in this guy, especially since he's Legend Scale. But the big thing to talk about, at least for me when it comes to Legends... Iron Factory is doing a new version of Megatronus. This is not based on anything. This is just their own take on it. And he looks insane. He looks a little bit try-hard, but he also just looks insane. I would love to pick this guy up because even though they've done a few Fallens in the past, I'm always interested in third party doing its own thing. Iron Factory has such a great track record that this version of the Fallen, I think, would be really cool. But now let's go up to more Masterpiece scale. This is a new company called Defense. They are doing a War for Cybertron, or I should, I should say Fall of Cybertron, Grimlock. This guy looks really good. I already have my Planet X Vulcan, but I'm always interested in more good Fall of Cybertron toys. So we'll just have to wait and see, but this guy looks very, very good, very solid. So this, I am always bad with the Technobots. But there's another new company in town, and they're going to be doing their own version of the Technobots. And they're showing off, is his name Nosecone? Why do I want to say his name is Nosecone? That doesn't sound right. Like I said, the Technobots, I'm not good with their names. But they've shown off three members. They've shown off the, uh, the drill tank. They're also going to be doing Afterburner. Afterburner's the motorcycle. Um, he looks a little bit better to me. And then they've also shown off their scatter shot, which I think looks the best. But I just want you guys to know right now, the most boring thing in third party to me is combiners. And the reason I say that is because every time one company does combiners, there's going to be 10 other companies that all are suddenly working on the same exact combiner. Case in point, Bingo Toys are also doing Technobots now. Um, Bingo Toys did Silencer, that really good Bumblebee movie Shockwave, an incredible toy. And I do think their Technobots look better. But in third party, nothing to me is more boring than G1 combiners. We've had too many. We've had all the combiners so many times in third party. Bingo Toys, I'm sure they're going to do a really good series of Technobots. Of course, we have Afterburner, Scattershot, and Strafe. That's the other part of this, is the fact that two companies showed off three members of the Technobots... And they are two-thirds the same. Both companies showed off an afterburner, and sh both companies showed off a scatter shot. I do think these guys look better, but just know this is not the first time we're going to be talking about repeat combiners in this one presentation. Oy. <laughs> There's this, uh, this character called Star Queen. Um, I'm sure someone out there is into this. I am not. Very quickly moving on. Someone from Iron Trans, a new company, they're doing their own version of Star Saber. And I'm going to say one, Iron Trans is a delightful name. That's a great name for a company. And then in terms of the uh, Star Saber, I think he looks incredible. He's very IDW2, and I think that he's going to be really, really cool. I can't wait to see in-hand stuff with him. But they're also going to give us a Victory Leo. And even though they showed us a very rough photo, I want to wait for a better photo before I show you their Victory Saber. The photos out there, just I think it gives these toys a bad look because they are very early prototypes. But yeah, I'm into this because even with third party, we don't have a lot of specifically Victory Leos and we definitely don't have a lot of Star Sabers. So now you have Fantastic Model. They're coming into the Masterpiece Skull and they're showing off a Masterpiece Ratchet. I really like this. Um, 
I like the original MP Ironhide and Ratchet, but this guy has much cleaner proportions. I'd be interested in picking this up. And of course, if you're going to do Ratchet, you're always going to do Ironhide. And just like Ratchet, I think Ironhide looks really, really, really solid. I really love how they were able to hide the, uh, the yellow stripe on his legs. So this is a lot of third-party stuff that we're going to have coming out. And it's kind of assorted companies. But if we're going to go from left to right, the little guy with the golden head, that is bot. If you know the last episode of season two of G1, some kids get Brawl's brain, basically, and puts him into their, like, little robot project, and he goes evil. So they're making a figure of Bot. Those green guys, those are the Centurion drones. In the episode where they bring the Stunticons and the aerial bots online, those are the things that are protecting Vector Sigma. And then that purple thing at the end is the cannon that Starscream uses in the second part of More Than Meets the Eye when he's testing out the Energon Cubes. So, you can see that there's two scales here. The big ones are to scale with Masterpiece, but there's also a smaller version to scale with uh, Generations. These are all 3D printed. There's going to be a lot of different accessories that were announced. I'm really just focusing on the figures, though. Same company. They're doing the squid that Hot Rod cut the tentacles off of to save Cup. And you can see, like, there's Fort Max in the background. This guy would be massive. And finally, this big purple guy here. This is from that episode where Sea Spray becomes a dude. Like, when he just turns into a human being. This was the guy who was, like, in charge of that planet. They're doing, again, a Masterpiece scale version and a Generation scale version. Which I think is incredible, because all these characters we looked at, Bot, the Centurion drone, the Squid, this guy, these are things that Hasbro will never, ever, ever, ever touch. So, I think for third party, and specifically 3D printing third party... That's a great avenue to really look into. Past that, you want to know what was not on my bingo card? Third-party beast bots. But here we are. We are now doing Battle Beasts. Uh, you can see that non-F Productions are doing these. And if you don't know who the Battle Beasts are, they are a very weird offshoot of Beast Wars that Takara Tomy did. Basically, they're just actual animals that have, like, techno-organic armor. They are very cool, fun little figures to collect, and hey, it looks like we're getting a couple of new ones. Also, this thing. So, I think that's the Shadow Leech from uh, Regeneration 1. I don't know for sure, though. Um, it's just a big monster, whatever it is. Uh, here we go. So, we're going to get into some of the old guard of third-party masterpiece now, starting with Make Toys. They are going to be doing a hot link, an animation accurate hot link. I've already looked at this seeker mold many times. I think it's perfectly fine. And if you're into a very purple boy, hot link is very fun. Here's what I was not expecting. They're doing a guy named Grad Mian. This is Highbrow. They're finally going back to doing some of the headmasters again. And Highbrow looks incredible. Um, I'm more of a brainstorm guy, but if this guy's good, I might pick him up because I like make toys and I really, really like headmasters. Fans toys are going to go back and redo Galvatron to be more cartoon accurate. Their sovereign is already considered one of their best toys. So even though I'm not a fans toys person personally, I would absolutely be interested to see how this one develops. You also have them doing hook and of course they're doing hook. Uh, we're going to talk about three different companies doing Devastator. And you want to know the absolute most boring thing in third party? Masterpiece Devastator. You want to know the reason why I've not done many toys of Devastator yet? It's because every time I feel like I can do it, there's another company that's like, We're also doing Devastator, guys! Does it look any different from the others? Nope! Cool. Cool. It's going to be the most film accurate hook. There's that. Uh, now this, though, they're doing pipes. I love pipes. I would absolutely get a fan's toys pipes. Look at him. He's such a handsome boy. Now, X-Transbots showed off one thing, and that one thing is a masterpiece misfire. This was a horrible photo. It looks like something that, like, a photo that was stolen. <laughs> but this was their official picture that they put into the presentation. Um, I'm interested. I'm very interested. I love misfire, so... Looking forward to this one, maybe getting colored prototype photos soon. And now my favorite company that's even Masterpiece adjacent, it's Mastermind Creations. 
They're going to take their masterpiece rumble mold and turn him into Senator Ratbat, which that's really fun. I don't think anyone's ever actually tried to make a Ratbat out of the humanoid cassette mold before. And I think that's a very clever idea. Very easy way to get a Senator Ratbat out there. They're also showing off Rotor. This was the exclusive to TFCon Baltimore, but he's probably going to be released and uh, general market kind of like we just saw with um, Rollbar. He looks very, very good. I love Ruination, which is great because we finally saw Ruination. Um, I'm hoping they're going to change some of the colors here. I think Ruination's supposed to have more silver in his head, but this looks really, really good. And I already love the Bruticus that Mastermind Creations put out. So I'm hoping Ruination's going to be just as good. Um, but guess what else Mastermind Creations is doing? Are you excited? Are you excited? There's their built-in Devastator. Yay. Oh, good. And more Constructicons. So this is Studio 01. And they are doing a uh, Devastator called Desolator. I'm a little bit more into these guys because at least they are their own unique style. We already saw their Scrapper and Hook. This is going to be their Mixmaster and Long Haul. This looks pretty cool, actually. Um, if I had to get a third-party Devastator, I would get these guys because at least they're unique. And I'm going to be honest. When I was putting this presentation together and when I was just thinking about what my notes were going to be on all the news, I was thinking about how I was just going to rag on all these companies all doing Devastator again. But then Studio One, I kept looking at what else they were presenting. Okay, so they wanted to do a Masterpiece Broadside. And it looks pretty good, actually. Broadside's kind of hard character to do. Okay, I'm into Broadside. I'm a little bit more interested in you, Studio One. Huh. You know, that Snarl looks really familiar. Don't get me wrong. Third-party Dinobots are almost as boring as third-party Devastators. But that's not a G1 Snarl. Why do I know those details? And then I see their sludge, and I realize they're doing Masterpiece Cyberverse. They're doing Cyberverse figures. These are Dinobot designs that never got good toys, really. So they've already shown off two, and then they show off Slug. And I'm looking at this, I'm like, that Slug looks incredible. Now, would they show off the Cyberverse Dinobot who never got a good toy and who absolutely deserved it? Boom. Studio 01, out of nowhere, on this boring, boring, all G1, all the time presentation, piques my interest because they start talking about these Dinobots. They are all pitch perfect, screen accurate, Cyberverse Dinobots, and I cannot wait for Cyberverse Swoop. I would be a day one buyer for the Studio 01 Dino Combiner Erebus. Um, I would pick up their other Dinobots too, but specifically Cyberverse Swoop. All day, every day, I would buy this figure. I'll buy two. I'll buy three. I'll buy three. Sure. I'm committing to that now. Um, and finally, finally, it feels like some companies are moving away from just doing G1 all the time. So I'm excited just from these Dinobots, but then Studio 01, like Steve Jobs announcing Apple, they say they have one more thing. Fall of Cybertron Metroplex. This thing is going to be gargantuan. It's going to be around the size of a Hasbro Titan class. And you can see he's going to be a lot bulkier than most of the Titan class figures. And I see this and I lost it. I lost it. I have always wanted a figure of Fall of Cybertron Metroplex. I think he is the best looking G1 adjacent Metroplex ever. And I just cannot wait. Like, don't get me wrong, G1 adjacent, sure. But, like, a Fall of Cybertron design, not from Planet X. And I love Planet X, I do. But more companies could do this. So I see this. So Cyberverse Dinobots and a Metroplex. I think, okay, maybe this was a bit of a boring third-party presentation for me personally. But at least there's cool stuff to look forward to. And then we saw this. So... This company is called Deformation, and Deformation are going to be doing a Chug-style Demolishor. So Demolishor, I was just talking about how I wish Age of the Primes would include a Demolishor. 
what this is going to be is effectively like Mastermind Creations IDW stuff. It's going to be that space in between Masterpiece and Generations. It's going to be more articulated and more detailed than most Generations, but they could still fit on a generation shelf. And I'm looking at this, and it's like, obviously, this is a 3D printed prototype. Obviously, this isn't painted, but I'm so excited because look at how good this looks, even as a very rough prototype. But then they keep going. They're doing Skywarp. They're doing Skywarp. And I see that, and I'm like, okay. So they're also going to be hitting the one seeker that Hasbro's not done yet because they've done Starscream Thundercracker. They're going to give us a Skywarp. And you can see they're also including the Minicons with these guys, which is awesome. And then they have the big reveal. Armada Starscream that's going to be coming with Swindle and an Alexis. And the Alexis is going to be in the spacesuit that she was in towards the end of Armada in the Unicron battles. But to me, that's like a thing I've been waiting for from third party forever, basically. Like, yeah. Let someone who's not Hasbro tackle Armada Starscream as a design, and we're getting both an articulated Swindle and an articulated Alexis to go with him. And just like Demolisher, even though this is just a prototype, it is a sharp-looking prototype, and I cannot wait to see the proper painted details on this guy. And just look at how great the sculpting is on this prototype, too. Like, for me, I think that Deformation won this TFCon. I think Studio 01 and Deformation, those are the two companies that sent out stuff that I was the most interested in. And as soon as there's pre-orders for these things, I'm, I'm going to give them my money. As soon as they will let me give them my money, I will. Because I want the Starscream, I want that Demolishore, I want that Swoop, and good God, I want that Metroplex. But there's one last thing that didn't make it to the TFCon presentation that I think is also worth bringing up. This is the Hedrokin Forever Leader. And when I first saw this, I was like, oh, wow, another Optimus. Look at his arm. This is a Skybound Optimus. He's going to be able to transform with the Megatron arm. You can even see that's why they put the truck mode in reverse, so they can see that the Fusion Cannon has replaced the Smokestack. It's going to be in scale with Generations. Perfect. Finally. Finally, someone's actually capitalizing on this. So, thanks to those three companies at the end, for what was, for me, a pretty boring TFCon presentation, became so exciting. I cannot wait for Cyberverse and Fall of Cybertron and Armada and Skybound stuff in third party. I cannot wait to get my grubby little mitts on so many of these things. And keep in mind, these are all prototypes. It's probably going to be a few years before we see them, but... Just the fact that there's something to be excited for in third party again. I cannot wait to see these things develop. And like I said, as soon as I can become an early adopter, I am going to become that early adopter. Because I have faith that these things are going to be interesting. They might not have the best build quality. They are all very early projects from very new companies. But I'm going to support them. Because I am sick of everything just being G1 all the time. I'm so tired of every third-party company doing a G1 Devastator. And each time it's like, guys, we are now 1.4% more accurate to this specific screen cap. I'm hoping that this will be good. I'm hoping that these are going to be good um, forays into third-party. But on that note, guys... I still think that the most important thing to think about this week is the John Warden thing. If you are able to, please go check out their GoFundMe. I have the link down in the description below. Keep in mind that this is the guy who was the lead designer for Combiner Wars, for Thrilling 30, for Power of the Primes, for Kingdom, for Siege, for War for Cybertron Trilogy as a whole, and Age of the Primes. A lot of those designs are designs that he would have been overseeing. So... Keep in mind, he made some of the best Transformers lines ever, and he seems like a pretty phenomenal human being. I don't support corporations. I will support artists within those corporations, and he is an artist. So if you're able to kick some money over, please do. If not, then just kind of keep him in your thoughts. Maybe share around that link if you're able to on social media. And past that, guys, thank you for watching, and we'll see what we get up to next time. 
hopefully there won't be as much to go over in the next news video because this was a little bit hard to keep track of everything but at the same time pretty good tfcon a lot of things to talk about a lot of things that actually really interested me so what were you more interested in from everything we saw is there any third party stuff that make might that might make you want to uh, dip your toe into it and best that we'll see what we get up to next time